Hi, my name is Tammy Pally. I am the Crafty Princess from Crafty Princess Diaries at www.tammypowley.com. You can also find me on YouTube and subscribe to my channel over there to see future videos. Um, I also have some craft videos over there right now if you wanted to take a look. All you have to do is go over to youtube.com and search for my name again. That's T-A-M-M-Y, P as in Paul, O-W-L-E-Y. And I'm calling this first episode of my podcast the pilot because I am just kind of throwing this out there into the weblog world to see what happens. Um, it might keep going. It might not, depending on how I feel about it and the feedback I get from people. The reason why I decided to go ahead and attempt a podcast was because I'm a podcast junkie. I love watching them, and there's also a few that I like to listen to, the audio ones. Um, however, most of them are knitting related, which is fine. I've learned so much from the knitting podcast that I've uh, viewed and listened to. However, um, you know, even though a lot of them do crochet and, and weaving and other related fiber, uh, like spinning as well, the thing is that I do all types of crafts. Um, like right now, my main craft, of course, is jewelry making. That's how most people know me. I'm also uh, very involved with crochet. And um, I like paper art. Uh, very often I you know, work on paper art projects. So there aren't a ton of podcasts right now out on the internet that you know, address various types of crafts. There, there are some, um, in fact, I think, for example, artbeads.com, that's a jewelry making podcast and that's a wonderful podcast that they have, um, of course, but it's all jewelry. It's not you know, other types of crafting, understandably, because they sell you know, beading supplies. So anyway, that's what kind of prompted me to go ahead and try this out. And um, let's see, I'm looking down at my notes, please forgive me, but I have to make a list of what I'm going to talk about or else I will forget because that's just how I am. So let's see, make sure you find me on YouTube and you can subscribe and then you'll know when other um, you know, videos are posted. And in fact, I'm actually looking for a new video camera that I can use for more how-to type videos. Right now I have a pathetic little flip camera and it's very handy but it does not show the detail that I need so I'm looking for something that's very uh, tech friendly because I'm technically challenged um, something that is not super expensive and um, something that can show some detail so if you have any suggestions I'm open to them all right so the first segment I wanted to do is called a craft tips very something very simple and it's a jewelry crafting tip having to do with odd shaped beads um, as an example here, I have some beautiful pearl stick beads, okay? And I bought these without any idea what I was going to do with them. I just love pearls. I love all the shapes, the colors. I'm just a pearl, pearl addict, so to speak. And um, so I just bought these at a show with nothing specific in mind. Then I brought them home and I was like, all right, what am I going to do with these? I mean, are you going to just wear it like this? I mean, that's kind of boring. Um, so what the first thing I did, I've made a few pieces, but the first piece that I made were just some simple earrings that used the, the stick pearls, um, so that you could see the stick pearls. Let me see if I can get to, there we go. You could see the stick pearls, um, but you didn't have to use a ton of them. And so you still get a really interesting design element. Um, hopefully you can see this. This is a little, um, amethyst bryolite and then two stick pearls, and then I used wire, um, gold filled wire, and then there's a little um, crystal bead here. So I just used a couple to kind of test them out, and it makes a really interesting pattern, and I've gotten tons of compliments. I love wearing these. They're very lightweight um, and comfortable and go with a surprising number of items in my wardrobe. So that's my tip. Just try something small. Don't be over, you know, don't be intimidated by something like this, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I spent big money on these and I have to make something fabulous, you know, to, um, you know, to um, make sure that I, you know, spent my money wisely. Just scale back, try a couple of beads, make something simple that you could probably wear every single day if you wanted to. Okay, so that's my craft tip. All right, so what am I working on? Um, as far as jewelry goes, I'm not working on a lot of projects. I have ideas, but the problem is that I recently um, I, as really in my husband, because <laughs> I'm not that handy, um, I helped him a little bit with what I could, but 
generally he did most of the work and uh, put some beautiful new flooring. In fact, again, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a video that shows the flooring and this whole room in here um, is uh, got crafting stuff in it. Uh, and I reorganize things big time in here. Um, in fact, that's why the walls are so bare because we haven't put up any photographs or pictures yet. But he put in beautiful new wood flooring and it gave me the opportunity to dig through and go through a lot of stuff that's been in here for like 15 years. <laughs> Um, and also, even though my cats are all over the place in here right now, they're not showing up. Um, they may show up for um, a little while if they feel like um, showing us who, uh, their, how cute they are. But anyway, um, they kind of get into everything, believe it or not. They're fairly young cats. They're only, the oldest is only maybe four years old. And so um, before I had them, I had another group of cats who were, you know, grew to be quite old. The oldest was 17 and a half years when we, we lost him. And old cats just kind of sleep. So I was in here making jewelry all the time. Not a problem. Um, I mean, they got into things a little bit, but nothing like these guys. I cannot sit and bead with them. There's just absolutely no way. It's just a, beads are a cat magnet. Okay. So um, slowly but surely, I started moving stuff into another room. That we have in the house and I realized finally excuse me for itching um, that I really just have to move stuff in there because I just cannot really seriously do jewel work in here that said because we did all this renovations that room is packed full it is a disaster and this room is beautiful and I just want to stay in here forever but I'm gonna have to go into the other room and clear it out um, in the next week or so and when I do that, um, we also are going to have somebody stay with us for a little while. So I probably won't have any jewelry making going on for a while. However, I do have some ideas. In fact, I have some um, wonderful pieces I've gotten from um, Blue Mud. Let me show her little packaging here. Uh, this is a piece I actually won from her on Facebook. She um, often shows her work on Facebook. And she has beautiful ceramic pieces. So I can show this. With, I don't want to take it out of the package yet. Um, but this is a little um, jellyfish, okay? And it's a it's a bracelet plank. You can see there's little holes here, and it's curved, okay? But I also have some pendants I purchased from her that are really adorable, and I have plans to make those into some um, just simple beaded necklaces similar to this. This isn't a piece she made, but um, similar to this idea that I'm wearing right now. So that is my jewelry in the future plans. Um, what I'm working on right now is really a lot of crochet because I am trying to um, meet the challenge of um, crocheting or knitting 5k worth of yarn by the 7th, which is creeping up on us because today is, uh, what is it, August 5th, so eek. Um, I'm really close. I have 601 yards to go, and um, that's why, in fact, I went ahead, this is a by the way, this is a project bag that I have. It's a 31 uh, product called a large zipper tote. And full disclosure, I'm a 31 consultant. Yeah, because I have nothing else to do, right? So anyway, this is um, just a simple granny square. I have quite a bit of baby yarn that I really want to get out of my stash. Um, I like it, but I'm, you know, getting a champagne taste now. So um, acrylic baby yarn, it's like, eh, it's okay. But I had quite a bit of it. Uh, long story, I won't bore you with why I had all, had all that. But anyway, I just feel like I wanted to work through that um, this summer and also uh, meet the de-stash challenge of the 5K that is put on by the Knit Girls. Um, they're uh, the Knit K, uh, K and I T Girls, G-I-R-L, three L, L-L-L-S, the Knit Girls over on Ravelry. And um, they have a Facebook group too. So anyway, um, this, if I get this done, it will be close, I think, to the 600, um, 600 yards I need. So that's one thing I'm kind of actually trying to crank on. Um, another thing I've been working on for a while, oh, I didn't even, I totally forgot about this. <laughs> and this, this is another zip bag, is a dinosaur, not a dinosaur, it is a dragon, and I cannot find the instructions, oh, no, I cannot find the instructions, but this is parts and pieces of a dragon who's a wing. Here is the tail. Um, I have a lot of just like leftover yarn, so I'm kind of not necessarily counting this towards the yardage because honestly, I don't know, um, I don't know how many yards is in here because it's just like a little ball of this and a little ball of that. And I have, like here's a, a yellow wing and a pink wing and 
So anyway, that makes it a little bit complicated. Um, I have some place. I thought it was up here, but now, oh, hold on. I got to go out of frame. Okay, here it is. Another zip tote top bag. Um, and let's use the zipper sound. Hello. Um, this is a scarf that I'm working on. I'm knitting this, obviously. Um, let's see if I can. The light in here is kind of so-so. I don't know if you can see, but that's a basket, like a basket weave stitch. So um, you do four purl, four knit, four purl, four knit. You go back and forth. Um, this is a project I started midway through uh, taking the Knit Lab Craftsy class, which I highly recommend. Um, this is probably not going to be done, obviously, in time. I still have how much? I still have all of this to do. So there's no way I'm going to get this done in the next couple of days to meet the challenge of the 5K. But this is just me plugging along with my knitting as I learn to knit still. Um, I learned so much in that Knit Lab class, though. I mean, I really feel like a knitter after taking that class. So highly recommend it if you're um, you've been wanting to try knitting and just have felt that it's too difficult because I've struggled with it for years. I even took like a face-to-face -face class with somebody and I just could not follow what she was trying to tell me to do. She was having me actually go knit, purl, knit, purl, every other stitch. But the problem was if you don't know what the stitches look like and you set it down for a sec, like you leave for a second or turn away for a second, you don't know if you've knit or purled. You know, it just gets very confusing. You don't really know what the difference is. And um, so eventually, actually, the, I learned to do knit by getting the free ebook from knitfreedom.com. And she just has you do a long scarf and you just do one stitch, knit, forever. So once you're done with that, you know knit, okay? And really, knitting is made up of knit and purl. Purl is the opposite of knit. So you, you, you're your needles actually do the opposite okay so the thing is though if like I said if you don't know what one is the other is um, you can't really see the difference here I can see the difference now because I've taken I took the the knit freedom ebook um, and, and worked my way through that and then also the the knit lab course so now when I look at something like this I can see the difference on this part of it not just down here um, so that's kind of critical or else, and she didn't really explain that to me, unfortunately. So, um, and maybe it was just me, maybe I'm just a bad student. I don't know. But anywho, um, yeah, knitfreedom.com has a free ebook. Totally recommend that. She also has some really nice uh, video ebooks that have videos embedded in the ebooks, and they're usually fairly reasonably priced. Um, so that plus craftsy.com, uh, definitely recommend. And of course, with craftsy, please make sure, I mean, I, this is what I recommend. <laughs> I don't have any craftsy, um, I don't have anything to do with them, but I recommend that you wait until you get a sale. This summer they had 50% off, and so, yeah, I, I bought a bunch of classes, so, um, and I always wait for a sale. I never pay full price for a class, so, and usually if there's a new class, they're going to, they're going to have some sort of a price, you know, reduction on it, and then every once in a while, every summer, in fact, for sure, they definitely have um, a big sale, so, you know, try to hold out for those sales. It's, it's much more, you know, worth it if you, you pay something like $15 as opposed to $30 for a class. And the other thing I am working on, yes, I know, is um, a teddy bear. And this is actually, again, a crafty class I took. It was the Amigurumi Woodland Animals class by Stacy Trump, who is fabulous. She's my very favorite Amigurumi designer. Let me flip this so you don't see. But this is the teddy bear that I'm going to make. I've made a ton of these already. Um, her class actually includes four patterns. You get um, a bird, the teddy bear, a reindeer, and what, oh, the raccoon. Whew, that raccoon was killer. That was a tough one to make. Um, but these, I can whip these up very fast. Again, I might in the next few days finish this up. I have the body and the head, and I think I have... I think I have three legs, so that just means I need two ears, the snout, and the nose, and then, of course, put it all together. So we'll see if that magically happens in the next couple of days. If it doesn't, I'm not, you know, freaking out. I mean, the, the D-Stash challenge that they have, um, that the Knit Girls have, there's no prizes. It's just a personal challenge, 
and if I push it back a few days, you know, no big deal. So that's what I'm crafting. Obviously, I'm much more into the yarn right now because um, it is not stuffed in another room that I can't get to like all my jewelry supplies. Uh, and then I guess there's one more thing I wanted to talk about before I go. I, I don't want to have these podcasts uh, be super long and boring. Um, short, sweet, to the point, for the most part. And that is going to be a little self-promotion. Voila. My new book is out. Yay. This is um, the Complete Photo Guide to Jewelry Making, second edition. So the first edition um, ha is still probably lingering around somewhere. If you got the first edition, this has changed um, considerably. I mean, not it's not a completely new book, but there are 15 new projects. Some of the projects in the first book were actually uh, removed and replaced with new projects. Um, I would say the chapters that were changed the most were the resin chapter um, and also the polymer clay chapter. Those have extensive changes to them. Um, let's see, the metal clay chapter has a little bit of change to it. And I honestly don't remember what else. Th this was a massive undertaking, just even though it wasn't a brand new book. Anyway, this is out and about. You can find it on Amazon.com, uh, Barnes & Noble. Um, most of the Michaels have carried the first edition, so I'm assuming they'll carry this one too. And this is actually the last uh, jewelry book I've worked on for a while. Um, though, you know, again, it's a big undertaking, especially this one. It has a lot of photographs in it obviously the complete photo guide okay and so it takes a lot to take all these photographs uh, luckily my husband has helped me and I had help from a few other people and vendors and that kind of thing so um, but still it's it took about six months on my end to complete most of my work on that book and then it takes six months for the publisher to do its part and then I get the galleys and I have to look at that stuff and that kind of thing so it takes about a year for a book like this to get completed um, and I don't have any other jewelry books going on in the works right now. I always have ideas for them, of course. Uh, but if anybody, any publishers or editors are looking for a freelance writer to write a jewelry book, I am now available. I have two other books I'm working on right now that are non-jewelry related, non-crafting related, really. Um, and I'm almost finished with both of them. One, one for sure, I just it's, a, um, it's kind of been advertised already. And when I get uh, when it's out there, I'll guide, I'll give you more information about it. It's kind of, it's an academic book, so it's not going to be for everybody. But um, and that I think I have to do the index on that at some point. I'm sure when it's very inconvenient for me, <laughs> when school starts up in the fall, and, which is like a couple weeks, that's I'm sure that's when I'll be contacted and told do the index like right now. And um, the other book is a creative work that I I've finished it but you know it's kind of hard for me to let it go and not keep working on it and I am kind of looking around for publishers though I'm also seriously considering just self-publishing it because I really expect not to make any money off of it um, most publishers these days it for it's a fiction work um, so most publishers like that require an agent and I'm kind of an anti-agent person I mean nothing against you if you are a book agent but um, my own personal experience with agents have not been very good so I don't understand why I would have to give money to somebody who is um, I, I don't really know what they do I guess they negotiate the contract um, my experience with the book agent was that she kind of just sat on my book and would not let me send it out to anybody <laughs> so my proposal at least so anywho um, yeah that's the writing that I'm doing right now Otherwise, we're going on almost 20 minutes, so I'm going to start wrapping things up here. I'd love to have some feedback from you guys. I, I know this is not perfect. I'm not editing it. I'm not putting any like URLs down here or anything like that. I just don't know how to do that. And I just want this to be something fun and kind of on the fly. But I am open to suggestions or, um, th I mean, be nice, okay? Uh, <laughs> Don't be mean. I don't mean mean suggestions, but for example, if there's a topic you would like me to cover or um, something that uh, looks horribly wrong back here, okay? Um, I know that this is not the best lighting and not the best camera, and I'm very, very fair-skinned, and um, I cannot get really any darker than this because um, I've had skin cancer issues, so I kind of like stay under umbrellas these days. And I live in Florida, so yeah, nice.
But uh, that's it. So if you want to email me, you can email me at T-A-M-M-Y-P-O-W-L-E-Y at yahoo.com. And like I said, if you go to www.tammypowley.com and click on the About Me page, I have links to Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry, um, all of the social medias that I am. Um, if not active, I'm kind of hanging out sometimes. I'm probably most active on Facebook. I have a page over there for jewelry and crafting and just my personal page. And then um, Ravelry, I kind of come and go. But anyway, please feel free to contact me and we will see. I'm tossing this out into the universe and see if it will stick. <laughs>